Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of June 4th, 2015. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, and I will be presiding. Um, we will start. This is the meeting that actually will, uh, the public presentation of the public hearing of the budget will follow uh, when we go into regular session. But as we start, I want nice to let you know that we understand that the um, broadcast of this meeting tonight may have difficulty. The signal is a little hinky, so um, I'm not sure how that's manifesting in people's homes or the thousands of people who watch this. I'm not sure, but just to let people know, this is being recorded, and we'll. Uh, if you missed it or you want to relive this moment, that you can you can uh, check it out on NCTV. Uh, I'll go to uh, Northampton Community Television's uh, website, and you will be able to see this again so uh, my apologies to anyone who's trying to watch at home and being frustrated actually I hope there's a great signal but that may not be the case so the way before we open every meeting we start with the public comment and traditionally we've established uh, an opportunity for the public to speak to the counselors and as such the counselors are constrained from speaking back the idea is this is your moment this is your opportunity to speak so uh, we're, we're not ignoring you. We'll sit, if you ask us a question, we'll sit there and smile, but that's about it. We're the we're constrained by rules from responding. Um, we ask that you keep your remarks three minutes or under. Um, we're, I'm, not, I'm not a tyrant. I understand that if you're on your last sentence and the three minute clock goes off, there's no one's going to get tasered, but. <laughs> I would appreciate it if you wrap up your thoughts because as you can tell there are a lot of folks here tonight and we do have to get to this budget thing which is a significant part of our job also you are allowed to speak on any topic of your choosing um, all that we ask you to do is to conform to some sense of decorum and respect and to respect and not to attack individuals you can attack us because we're public figures you're welcome to and I only verbally by the way I, the physical attacks I really discourage I, I, I think that, I prefer that not be the case, but referring to other people who might not be public figures would be out of line. So with all that said, first up, Paige Neal. Oh, and also when you come up, and Paige, you're fine, when you come up, uh, identify yourself and tell us where you live. Hi, my name is Paige. I am 10 and a half years old. I'm from Florence. I would like to mention an idea to help the homeless. I think the city should take the closed nursing home on Bridge Road and turn it into a homeless shelter. I would like to do this because there is a large homeless population and I want to help the homeless. This building would be perfect because it has lots of rooms for people to sleep in. You could even have a roomie. It also has a big kitchen to pr prepare meals. It also has big rooms for hanging around, reading, or playing games. It also has a playground with swings for the children to play on. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Paige. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sally Weiss, please. Hi. Um, I'm known as, I, I guess, sorry, I know myself mo mostly as an anti-war activist, but um, I'm here about the Columbia gas, um, I would call them hijinks, uh, to suppress the mo movement against the <coughs> gas pipeline going through not too far from here. Um, where the anti-war movement and the climate uh, movement, uh, movement join is on things like big energy. Um, if, if we don't save the planet, if we don't stop having war that takes probably uh, more energy than any other single uh, thing that our government does, uh, we're not going to save the planet. And um, it, I'm afraid it seems very typical that the big corporations in big energy are, are going to make people miserable. They're going to move into towns in western Massachusetts and they're not going to be able to hook up to gas. Now in my yard, for ever since the ice melted, which was what? three or four weeks ago. <laughs> anyway, um, there's been a sign, you know, pipeline with a slash through. And I really believe that. 
and I'm uh, good friends of a lot of people that are here, some that aren't here, uh, to, to speak about this tonight. Um, so Northampton should join into figuring this out in a much better way. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Margaret, you there? There you are. Margaret Bullet-Jones is here. Okay. Thanks. Um, my name is Margaret Bullet-Jonas, and I live at 83 Bancroft Road in Northampton. And uh, I'm an Episcopal priest. I work for the Diocese of Western Massachusetts as a missioner for creation care, so I focus on climate change. So I'd like to just say a couple words to express my strong support of the resolution that calls for transparency and public representation regarding the natural gas infrastructure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a person of faith. I'm a Christian, I, which means I live in hope. I live in hope that we can create a better future together and that we can learn to live uh, more lightly on the earth, that we can learn to create justice and a sustainable society. Um, and we, here we are in the midst of, the, of a climate crisis where we know that we need to keep 80% of known fossil fuel reserves in the ground. So we need to look very, very carefully before we build any <coughs> new infrastructure that commits us for years and years to come to even more dependence on carbon-based fuels such as oil, so-called and uh, so-called natural gas. Uh, th this pipeline is bad for the climate, it's bad for our local environment, it's I think ultimately going to be terrible for the economy. Um, now is the time when we need to be building clean, safe, renewable sources of energy. We need to be developing conservation and energy efficiency. And as you know, there's a deep and widespread skepticism in this community about the necessity of a moratorium on new gas. Uh, many of us are concerned that this is really a strong arm tactic uh, as a way of pushing through the building of the pipeline. Uh, those of us who care especially about the poor are, are aware of the impact of the moratorium on the two affordable housing projects proposed for Northampton. Uh, so it's, it's a particularly a stressor on, on those of low financial means. So I, I support the resolution and its call for transparency and for public representation around what is going on with this pipeline. And I'm very grateful especially for the fourth point at the end of the resolution, which takes into account and takes seriously the, the context in which we're having this conversation, which is we're in the midst of an emergency around the climate, and we need to be acting swiftly and boldly and decisively to create a better future. And I am, I live in hope that together we can do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Emory Ford, please. Hi, I'm Emory Ford, living in Florence on Spring Street. I'm here tonight to express a concern about the city budget, and specifically a concern about the stormwater and flood control budget. I chaired the task force you commissioned to investigate and recommend an ordinance for a fee to fund stormwater and flood control needs. This is the first year of the city budget that reflects the fees collected from the ordinance you passed. During the work of the task force, the task force asked for a list of needed projects. Subsequent to the passing of the ordinance, I met with the mayor to discuss the need for a plan defining the projects. After the charter revisions <coughs> were complete, again, I met with the mayor and recommended that he direct the Public Works Commission to develop a five-year plan for projects for stormwater and flood control. Examining the 2015 budget, the only defined project I could identify is $200,000 for the pumping station. The fees currently being collected are the order of $2 million. Actually, it's $1 million and some change. The bulk of that money appears to be going to operational expense. The operational expenses in the budget are not new to the BT, DPW. As far as I can determine, no new staff to work on stormwater and flood control has been hired. That must mean that the funds 
generated from the fees now cover expenses that last year were covered by the operational budget during previous years. One of the premises for initiating the fee was to fund anticipated new requirements imposed by regulations and to upgrade infrastructure under, that was underfunded in the past. I believe the taxpayers paying the fee deserve a five-year plan for stormwater and flood control projects. The fee is a new fee and the taxpayers were told the fee was to fund projects for stormwater and flood control. I recognize the stormwater and flood control fee is a small part of the total city budget, a little less than 2%. However, the issue is that the fee was developed for a specific purpose, stormwater and flood control. The taxpayers deserve to know the specifics on projects and they deserve a plan that defines how the fee will be used in the future. I recommend that you do not accept the budget until there is a five-year plan for stormwater and flood control projects. The mayor should charge the Public Works Commission to develop the plan and communicate that plan to the city. Thank you very much. Ravine, you're up. Thank you, Henry. My name is Irvine Subelman. I live at 116 Laurel Park. And I'm standing in support of your resolution regarding the moratorium for new gas service that's been uh, called for by Columbia Gas and Berkshire Gas. And I just want to say that I really love your focus on transparency and accountability. And I was just really glad that that was the in the title and very clearly stated because I do feel like this is a coercive move on the part of these corporations and it'd be great for us to find out the reality behind it. Um, we in Massachusetts have long been seen as leaders in promoting renewables, um, conservation, energy efficiency, and this is not the time to back down. Indeed, it's the time to double down on our commitments to the, for the long-term health and safety and economic resilience of our community and of our commonwealth. I urge you to pass this important and timely resolution and to send copies of it to the DPU, to the governor, to the attorney general who identifies herself as our ratepayer advocate. Um, so I think she deserves to get a copy of this also. And as a concerned citizen of Northampton, I thank you for speaking out on our behalf. Thank you very much. Uh, Marty Nathan, please. Hi, I'm Marty Nathan. I'm at 24 Massasoit Street in Northampton. And I he I'm here as well to speak in support of the resolution about the NED and the Columbia gas for this city moratorium on new gas hookups. I think that um, there has been a lot of behind the scenes horse trading and I wish we could know exactly what was the deal that was made between Kinder Morgan and Columbia and Berkshire Gas Companies. That has been redacted from the filings by Columbia Gas um, and I wonder why the DPU allowed that to happen. Um, I think that uh, Columbia Gas in our city and Berkshire Gas in Amherst and, and Hadley and Hatfield, well, it's our city and, and East Hampton, um, for Columbia Gas, are really threatening us. This is, this is, as somebody said, blackmail to try to get us as a community to say that it's necessary to have the NED. It is not necessary to have the Northeast Energy Direct Pipeline. It is for export. It is a way to get that fracked gas that nobody in the United States has the capacity to buy out on the, on the ocean across the seas where the, it can get a higher price and the profits can go up. We are an excuse for that. The Columbia Gas uh, filings to get um, to get to tap off it to get give us gas that is an excuse because the FERC needs to say uh, to know that it, it will be of use in, domestically in the state of Massachusetts 
it is a smoke screen and I am very very proud of my city I'm proud of you counselors for having put this resolution together to say that the smoke screen has got to stop the the as a, a physician I must say the grabbing of the external male genitalia and putting them in the vice by uh, Columbia gas uh, has just got to stop and we need to go on to become a community that is no longer de dependent on carbon on fossil fuels. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jasper Lapiansky, please. Uh, hello, my name is Jasper Lapiansky. I live at uh, 43 West Street. I am going to speak about uh, what is probably the least interesting of all the uninteresting financial orders. Um, and uh, it's very short, so I'm just going to read it and then talk about it. It says, uh, ordered that the $1.5 million of borrowing authority authorized under the loan order approved on June 5, 2014 for the purpose of improvement of public parks and playgrounds at Pulaski Park be rescinded. And um, I wish to highlight this as a thing not often talked about, argued about, or fought over, and that would be a uh, government that has not actually, in fact, run amok. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, shine a little spotlight on the other side of the coin. Um, most of our national, and even to some extent our local dialogue, is fixated on if you give, and actually there's already been a public com comment about this tonight, which I wasn't expecting, um, if you give X government body money, one, it will not use it well, two, it will probably ask for more, and three, it only goes in one direction. Um, I've never believed this to be the case. I firmly believe that uh, with proper public and judicial oversight, you can have a government that works, and I'm in favor of that. And I. By the way, I'm happy to pay taxes and even uh, stormwater utility fees if, if uh, I ever become a property owner in the city to, to do that because we need things like schools and parks and, oh, I don't know, storm drains. I think those are useful things. Um, I, I may frown on police practices, but we need those too. And so you see, I mean, unless you vote it down, in which case I, I, would, I would obviously rescind this comment, but in all likelihood it's going to get nine votes since there's nine of you here, and I, I think that this can serve to highlight that thing that always gets shoved under the rug, which is the government working as it's supposed to. So thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Douglas Rapp? My, Ross. <coughs> Ross, I'm sorry. My bad. Um, honorable members of the council, uh, my name is Douglas Ross, and I live at I live at 73 Barrett Street, and I want to talk about expanding um, pre pre K and preschool uh, for full day, but I don't really have a lot of time to talk about that, so I'm just going to talk about my experience um, working in an inclusive classroom where half of the children have um, disabilities and the other half of the children um, don't have disabilities. Uh, I am a volunteer at um, Bridge Street Elementary School and I am studying to be a preschool teacher. Uh, one of the things that I notice about being in this inclusive environment is the dedication that Miss Laura, Miss Julie, Miss Jessica, and Miss Joanne do each and every day. Many of these kids um, are very young, they're between the ages of three and five. They struggle, but they really, really, really try hard. And over my three to four months that I've been volunteer with them, I have seen tremendous progress from several of, several of the children who I can't name because of confidentiality reasons and, and how they have progressed. One student who I'm not going to name, in the beginning of the year, she would not respond to anyone. She wouldn't talk to anyone. She wouldn't say anything to anyone. And it's almost the end of the school year now, and she communicates. She waves at people. She responds. She can follow directions. She can sit in groups. And I know as a former um, student of Spring Public Schools, um, and as a person who have has, has my own struggles and my own disabilities myself, how I have benefited from being in a full day preschool from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, two and a half hours is just not long enough. Um, many of these kids who struggle and who have made tremendous progress 
will not be ready for kindergarten when um, the 2015 2016 school year starts and they will not be able to join their peers that they have formed relationships with and I kind of uh, blame that on the fact that Miss Laura, Miss Julie, Miss Jessica, Miss Joanne uh, don't have enough time with them. Um, many of the methods that they use are very useful um, for these kids. They're able to remember songs. They're able to remember uh, different things. And um, I know you guys are talking about um, the fiscal budget for 2016. Um, I don't know if the education budget is going to be talked about tonight, but I would like for you to consider possibly finding any way that you can to expand um, preschool um, for full day because we know that kids who are low income and minority children and, dis and children with disabilities benefit from starting education early. And I can tell you that these kids will benefit from um, a full day preschool. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Council, for listening to me. Thank you very much. Um, that's all I have signed up. Anyone else is welcome to speak. Is someone interested in speaking? Francis? I, I signed up, but maybe I signed oh. in the wrong group of the sheet. Oh, there you are. You know what? I skipped over you. That's my bad. You signed up. I just hopped over. I'm Francis Crow, Three Langworthy Road, Northampton. I'm here in support of the resolution against the pipeline. Is it this, the Kinder Morgan pipeline is an issue confronting communities across the state, whether or not the pipeline runs in our own backyards. According to the Mount Great Land Conservation Trust, the proposed pipeline would run through at least 148 parcels permanently protected from development by Massachusetts Article 97. The 148 particle parcels include 19 conservation farms, six state forests, six state wildlife management areas, 21 town forest or conservation areas, eight protected watershed areas, five sections of national scenic trials, 12 land trust properties, four sporting clubs, a municipal playground, a YMCA camp, according to Lee Youngblood, executive director of Mount Grace, further the pipeline would be built under numerous waterways including the Connecticut River. Whether or not any of these parcels is near here in Massachusetts, building a pipeline under or over them will negatively impact high quality uh, natural resources and habitats throughout our state. Aside from obvious destruction of beautiful land, building the pipeline would inevitably have a negative impact on rare species, open spaces, tourism, and many homeowners. In addition to a significant loss of our national environment are very real dangers of explosions, fires, and leaks that are endemic to pipelines. September 9th in 2010, pipeline explosion in San Buna, a San Francisco suburb, killed nine people and destroyed 70 homes, according to the Associated Press. A similar pipeline ruptured on May 4th, 2009 near Palm City, Florida. The blast tossed 106 feet of buried pipeline into the air. More than 36 million cubic feet of gas escaped. The most recent explosion occurred in January in Brook County, West Virginia, when a one-year-old pipeline exploded, sending toxic fumes hundreds of feet into the area. Each accident gas pipeline failed to conduct 
prior inspections of tests that might uh, reveal weakness. I think I've run over my uh, a statement, but look on the back sheet of the seat uh, uh, copy of what of the statement for the uh, additional hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have that statement, and we submit it into the public record. <clears throat> now we truly exhausted all the people who genuinely signed up. Is anyone interested in speaking? Speak now or forever hold your peace or hold it till the next council meeting. Okay. I will ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. <coughs> Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Lavarro. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. Councilor Spector. Here. We have uh, everyone here, so we have a quorum and call this meeting to order. Our first uh, order of business actually is a public hearing, the convening of a public hearing, and I'll accept a motion to open the public hearing Some of the proposed FY 2016 budget. And the motions have made and seconded. All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, so we are in. We now in. I'm not sure how everyone would like to proceed. We do actually have someone signed up for public comment for the uh, budget. So um, our tradition is to hear from proponents, opponents, either way. But in this instance, um, John Clapp, if you're interested, you are welcome to come up and speak. And there is no limit on your time in this instance. So you 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 just. Um, I wasn't sure which uh, sign up sheet to put my name on. But the counselor said that I should be on this. It's not directly budget related, but it's about saving money. So okay, I'll that seems ahead. budget related, yeah. Um, uh, some of you were here in 2010 when we spoke uh, about saving the dam. This is the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam. Uh, and the goal remains the same, to leave the historic dam in place. But now there are new issues. The city needs to reevaluate its position on dam removal. Additional information has come to light uh, leaving the dam in place could save the taxpayers and ratepayers a substantial amount of money. Uh, several years ago, there was a great deal of misinformation shared regarding the amount of water in the reservoir and the amount of water that would make its way to the lower dam, combined with a 500-year flood, as well as a so-called domino effect. This was conceded by GZA and the former BPW. In a 500-year storm, the collapse of the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam would add very little to such a scenario. The 500-year flood alone would inundate Leeds. Back then, we were supported by many residents, and the CPA thought enough of our project that a, that a, 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 a $20,000 grant was awarded to, save, to help save the dam. Uh, but the mayor at the time refused to grant the funds. Back then, the City Council voted unanimously on a resolution to support our efforts to restore the dam. Again, it was taken away. The dam is eligible for National Register, Registry of Historic Preservation, and the Northampton Historic Commission supports putting the dam on the registry and wants to preserve it. We understand that the money to tear it down has been spent, but good money should not be spent after bad. Alternatives to, well, uh, alternatives to removal include uh, alternatives to removal include lowering the hazard class to middle hazard, which would substantially lower the repair costs. And if the sediment displaces the water enough to bring the total gallons to five million, uh, uh, total gallons to five million, dam safety no longer has jurisdiction over the dam, and it can be left the way it is. Eight years ago, the reservoir only held six million gallons. There's been a, a lot of uh, additional sediment with all the, um, the hurricanes. Uh, uh, and this was down from 18 million, which it originally held. The repair costs have included dredging the reservoir at a cost of $500,000. Um, and, and these are rounded off figures. There's been a change of figures all along. Uh, if the dam is left, sediment removal does not need to be done. Allowing the reservoir to essentially, uh, eventually silt in, which would create a marsh that would attract more wildlife in addition to those that are already there. Uh, I would also, it would also act as a sediment catch to keep silt 
out of the uh, middle reservoir, which is the backup for the city. Uh, this information warrants a second look. The latest plan is to tear the dam down, allowing the sediment to slowly wash downstream into the middle reservoir. The plan was rejected in 1976 by CONSCOM and rejected again in, in the late 2000s by the DPE. Yet GZA has submitted this again. If the plan is rejected again, this will add $500,000 in dredging costs and $400,000 to $600,000 in trucking to remove the sediment. Save this money for projects uh, and other, other infrastructure. Uh, and, and please stop the efforts to remove the dam. Uh, and we asked for a full accounting of the amount paid to, to GZA for dam related work. I invite the counselors to join us to view the dam in the reservoir and ask that you support the citizens of the city who are, who are fed up with uh, overpaying the projects for projects that have less costly alternative. And we ask that the support of the support of the friends, we are the friends of the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam, uh, support of the friends, which would save the town hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're you were right, actually, in your original assessment, because there is no budget line item right now that relates directly to that. But um, your testimony it actually makes more sense because you would have run over three minutes in the public session, but noted and if you have a document you want to submit for a public record by all means you can deliver that up here sure okay that, that, that works okay is there anyone else who wants to speak to the budget or have any questions or comments for all of the budget Douglas you're welcome to come up again thank you honorable members again uh, <laughs> um, I have two questions and they're both related to the topic that I talked about um, just a few minutes ago. Um, have any of you, um, honorable members of the council, studied the effects on expanding preschool education on children? And my second question is, if there is no way for you to uh, expand on pre-K education, are there any alternatives that the city of Northampton can provide for young children with disabilities if they are not able to access um, preschool um, education services um, through the public system? Thank you. Well, um, and you're welcome to stay up here so we can, it, we're a little more casual here in this case. Um, when it relates to the budget, actually, the, the, we are allowed by law, the council can cut, we can cut, or we can vote and approve or disapprove the budget. Those are our three options. We cannot add to particularly any line item or um, program line. That said, though, um, and in fact, actually, the case that you're making is a very, uh, by my reckoning, and I'm speaking only for myself in this sense, it's a very viable case and 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 just. And it's one that you make to the school committee because they're the ones who essentially work with the superintendent to develop and create the, the budget for the school committee. Schools count for um, well over half of the budget for the for Northampton. So it is it's it's very important and clearly Northampton, um, places a very high priority on investment in education in this community. So, uh, yeah, I'm not blowing smoke here. I think you actually. <laughs> well, maybe I showed up to the wrong meeting. Then. Well, well, well the not necessarily. I mean, you 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 have a good message, and it's well well worth repeating. Um, and I think you'll you'll find receptive ears at uh, at the school committee as well. But that that said, it's not within our power to assign any particular funds in addition to what's already been recommended out of the budget. Just gotcha. All right, thank you, honorable members. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for coming and speaking to us about both of those things. Uh, anyone else from the public wish to? Uh, Jasper. I will accept before I ask this question that I didn't uh, do the research, which is why I have to ask it. OK, sure. What is the amount of money that is allocated towards uh, sidewalks in this year's budget? The development of, of new sidewalks or maintenance of sidewalks? Are they different items? Um, it depends. Some, some, some sidewalks are funded through community development block grant funds, which are federal funds. Some are uh, in the line item for the DPW to develop sidewalks out of our general budget. And What's the line item for the DPW? Let me, let me see what I can find for you here. Because they're in different divisions. Yeah, they are in different yeah. divisions. 
it depends who provenance also. <clears throat> Maybe I couldn't have found it on my own at Let's see. Streets and streets, streets, streets and sidewalks. sidewalks page ninety-four. <coughs> page one eighty-one. One eighty-one. One seventy-three as well. Yeah, it's on a bunch of different pages. Yeah, because it's all Maybe split up into different comes out, of, comes out of different zones. There's right now under general fund for sidewalks. So there's I see a line item for fifty thousand dollars under the general fund for uh, dedicated to sidewalks. Um, there's also ten thousand on uh, out of that's not in the general fund. So. It's in a number of different silos, depending on the projects. Is it, uh, the mayor could probably say that better for you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. So for a total of sixty thousand, is that what I'm hearing? Fifteen capital. Um, I was suspect it's greater than that. Yeah, that's that was the item that I was quoting too. It's the fifty thousand dollars for the general fund. On page one seventy three. That was the page one seventy three. One there. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's for replacement. There's also a fund for repairs, I believe, too. Well, it's under, and that's under DPW, right? So, Your Honor, you, you <coughs> want to ballpark it, do you think? You have a sense of... Or the streets division, and also out of our general paving budget, oftentimes sidewalks can be included in that as well. So it's, it's I mean, there's significant just general repair funds, but then we've actually dedicated $50,000 to okay. sidewalks, as well as another... Twenty-five or thirty-five thousand for traffic calming, um, which in some circumstances could include sidewalks or sidewalk bump outs. Um, it's also also included in um, any large-scale development. We now mandate require the installation of sidewalks at the developer's expense too. So there will be some new sidewalks developed that will not come under the city budget that would be actually mandated under their uh, the orders that they have uh, required to meet the conditions of a permit. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. So, Got it. so then what, the number I wanted to compare it to was what we're planning on spending on streets. I, I suspected that's where you were going because I, I know that you were that that you have advocated in that direction before. So, the city's contribution is five hundred thousand uh, dollars to the paving uh, budget as part of the capital program, and then there's state funds which are specifically. Now So given the 10 to 1 ratio, um, which is actually subst uh, a substantially better ratio than had initially been proposed in the, in the five-year capital improvements plan, so uh, I, I, I commend that. My questions would be, uh, and, the, and these are completely neutral questions, do you think, uh, counselors, uh, that the 10 to 1 ratio represents a ratio of current actual usage? Well, it depends, and and it's interesting. I, the, as far as per capita, let's well, say. now the point is, is of course, you you were, you. I think you're asking about the de development of new sidewalks. I'm you have spoken before, and I don't want to project something on you, but you've talked about developing new sidewalks, and most of the money that we're talking about, the five hundred thousand dollars for roads, is not to develop new road systems. It's to maintain and improve the existing road system. So, I don't want to compare apples and oranges just for the purpose of the discussion. I, see, I don't see that as apples and oranges. I see that as, as uh, more or less the same thing. We have a limited pool of money. Where are we going to spend our precious resources? Are we going to spend it keeping uh, cars on the road, putting more cars on the road, or getting people out of their cars, getting them to socialize, getting them to exercise, uh, all of the things that actually being outside is good for? One of them, of course, is not this past Monday, but that's really not the point here. Um, I, I, I think it's worth considering whether that ratio is, is appropriate for current use and whether it's appropriate for future use along the timeline of this is how long we expect it, the, the, this street, this sidewalk to last before we have to then deal with it again. Um, 
because we're not going to get more money from somewhere. We've figured out how much money we have. Uh, how you spend it, I see those as different things. That's why I'm not in the Tea Party, right? How you spend it reflects um, partly values and partly priorities. And so I, I would ask that you carefully consider whether that is an appropriate ratio based on what we actually think we're going to get out of it. That's my request. Thank you. Thank Have a you. good discussion. Thank, thank you very much. Anyone else? Any comments relative to the budget? Move to close the public hearing. Motions are made to close the public hearing. Is there second. a second? Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Let's close the public hearing. Uh, next up, we have communications from the mayor. Your Honor, you got anything? Okay. You don't have to make anything up. No, I have a couple okay, right. of items. Um, actually, one of them is a quick follow up to uh, a communication that I had with you at your. Left a lot of pens here. Um, at your last meeting, um, and this concerned, I passed out copies of the city's um, bond rating um, that we received, which was uh, very strong and um, and excellent. And you may recall that I came to you in April um, and asked for you to approve a little bit out of sequence a series of capital projects totaling, I believe it was two point nine seven five million dollars. Um, this included. Um, about a million dollars of paving money. It included uh, LED streetlights. It included DBW equipment. It included levy work. Um, I wanted to report to you that uh, that we did go out to bid um, for competitive bond rates on basically to bond those funds, um, and we did uh, close those bids. And I wanted to report back to you that uh, that we received um, as part of that an average interest rate on that almost three million dollars of 1.562 percent um, which our which our um, which our bond rating agency attributed to our strong you know bond rating um, so I just wanted to kind of close the loop on that because we we talk about that a lot and we talk about the importance of reserves and we talk about the importance of our city's financial stability um, we talk about the importance of maintaining a strong bond rating and then you know you read the bond rating and they talk about all those things so I wanted to kind of bring it full circle to say we did go out to bond um, and, and again um, I think most people would like to borrow uh, money at one point you know five percent uh, much less three million dollars at one point five percent so I wanted to report back to you on that um, the other issue that I wanted to um, that I wanted to report to you about was to give you a quick um, update on the police chief uh, process. Um, what I wanted to report to you is that it is going to be my uh, plan, I wanted to just sort of give you a timetable and the public a timetable, um, that on this coming Monday, uh, which would be the 8th of June, um, uh, by at 4 p.m., I will announce uh, the finalists uh, for the police chief position. Um, I then also wanted to announce that on Thursday, uh, June 11th, I'm inviting um, city residents to come to a public reception uh, to actually meet the finalists. Um, this will be at 6 p.m. It'll be at the uh, police station in the community room of the police station. Um, it's a it's non-structured event. It's just an opportunity for um, uh, members of the public to come and meet and interact with um, with the finalists. Uh, my intent is to um, and again, there's still some additional assessments and interviews that will take place between now and then. But my intention is to um, announce uh, my appointment um, of a police chief. Um, in submitting an appointment order to the City Council the following Tuesday, um, which would be the 16th of June, um, in order to get it on your Council agenda for June 18th um, to meet the Council filing deadline. So that's my proposed timetable. So again, this coming Monday, I will announce um, the finalists. 
And then on Thursday um, evening at 6 o'clock, there will just be an open opportunity for members of the public to come and uh, meet those finalists and have a chance to uh, spend time with them and interact with them. And then the following Tuesday, um, it's my intention to announce uh, my appointment and submit it to the City Council. <coughs> and obviously, that appointment will, um, you know, will be subject to contract negotiation and, and medical checks and things like that. Um, which is fairly standard. So that's my other uh, point of uh, information. If anyone has any questions, I can. I can any answer. questions, comments? Okay. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, uh, the July 13th is, will be uh, the next meeting after that for ordinance. If it gets referred to ordinance. I was going to, um, I was going to speak with you about that. Um, I was actually going to request that the ordinance and appointments committee uh, be willing in the last week in June to perhaps schedule a special meeting um, uh, to be able to conduct uh, that uh, review. Um, which would then allow the appointment to come back to the council by July 9th or July. Uh, I'll defer to the chair on that. July 9th. So yeah. We'll work on that. My hope was that something could be done in the in the next few weeks. Um, I know you have a seven. There's a seven day rule in the charter uh, between when that can when that referral happens and when the meeting can happen. But I think that would still allow as early as the third. Uh, you know, the fourth Thursday and then the following week would be possibilities. Um, so I was, I was going to speak to the chair about that afterwards. All right. Well, he's on the case, so to speak. Uh, we have no proclamations, resolutions, recognitions, but there's a possibility of one minute announcements. Any council, council LeBard? Yes. Um, I've been asked to read this off. Shred Day fundraiser at the Northampton Senior Center, which is this Saturday, June 6th from 9 to 12. And the cost is $5 per bag slash box for having documents shredded. An additional service will be available as well. If you have old computer hard drives, those can also be brought along to have destroyed for a cost of $10 per disk. The hard drive must be out of the computer. And if you have any kind of concerns or information, please call Joanne Brooks at the Northampton Senior Services and Senior Center. Then I got one in today. Um, the City of Northampton Public Health Department nurse, Lisa Steinbach. The RN presents a one-hour session on stroke, which will be Wednesday, June 17th, the time at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Northampton Senior Center. And that there's no registration. It's open to all seniors, and the public is welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Shara. Uh, yes, the Northampton Arts Council has announced the theme and date for trans performance. Um, the theme is look at the movies. It's the 25th year of Transperformance. Uh, and the date is August 25th, Tuesday, August 25th, 4 to 9.30 p.m. Um, and they are looking for hosts to entertain the audience in between the acts. So people should get in touch with them with their ideas. Really put your puppetry skills to the test <laughs> if you're interested or your musicality or your opportunity to just show off in public. Um, any other one-minute announcements? No. My goodness, this meeting's moving. Uh, we, then we'll right get down to business. There's a resolution here calling for, uh, you may have heard referred to in the uh, in public comment, it's the resolution calling for transparency and public representation regarding the natural gas infrastructure. This is upon the recommendation of, of myself, Council President Bill Dwight, Council Ryan R. O'Donnell, and Council Vice President Jesse M. Adams, and Council Elisa F. Klein. Uh, whereas Columbia Gas of Massachusetts has imposed a moratorium on providing new natural gas service to residential and commercial customers in the city of Northampton, just as Berkshire Gas has in other communities throughout Hampshire and Franklin counties, and whereas the moratorium in Northampton carries serious economic consequences for the city, 
and impedes important development, including the two proposed affordable housing projects on Pleasant Street. And whereas Berkshire Gas has cited a lack of capacity in the natural gas pipeline spur known as the Northampton Lateral as the reason for its moratorium, and indicated that the only construction of the northeast expansion and excuse me, and indicated that only the construction of the northeast expansion of the Tennessee gas pipeline, now known as the Northeast Energy Direct Project, can provide the extra capacity required to restore service. And whereas the residents of Western Massachusetts have rightly raised questions about the timing of this moratoria of the moratoria, possibly being directly related to widespread public opposition to the Tennessee gas pipeline expansion, and whereas clarity and transparency would benefit the impact of communities both local and regional by restoring public confidence and trust. And whereas, in addition to those supporting the Northeast Energy Direct Project, residents who oppose the project would be represented in proceedings conducted by the Department of Public Utilities as it reviews potential agreements between local natural gas utilities and the Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company. And then whereas, the Pipeline Awareness Network for the Northeast Incorporated is a nonprofit corporation representing the interests of residents opposed to the overbuilding of gas pipeline capacity in the region. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Northampton, Massachusetts, one, calls on Columbia Gas and Berkshire Gas to embrace the complete to embrace complete transparency and make public all engineering and financial information substantiating the claim that Northampton Lateral is at capacity and to explain why the need for the moratorium was not known farther in advance. And two, ask the companies to explore alt alternative solutions, including upgrading existing infrastructure, as well as put forth their plans in the case of uh, that the Northeast Energy Direct project does not materialize. And three, affirms its support for the intervention of the pipeline uh, awareness network for the Northeast Incorporated in proceedings before the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities that relate to the Northeast Energy Direct Project. And finally, four, ask the Department of Public Utilities to consider the project in the broader context of the Commonwealth's energy future, which should encourage conservation, greater energy efficiency, and renewable resources. I'll accept the motion to advance so moved. Second. Is there a second? Um. Uh, Councilor Spector. Uh, thank you, the sponsors of this, for putting this forward. I just want to speak to number four, which is about the Department of Public Utilities looking at kind of the broader issue of energy in general. I just find it very ironic, and some of you may be, this may be new information for you, but many of you know that the landfill was, uh, we had an RFP out for a big solar project on the landfill. We are one of many communities with projects with big solar projects, some communi called community solar, that are in the works. All of these now in Western Mass are put on hold. The, and the one at our landfill may never happen. So simultaneously, so this is just speaking to the broader issue of utilities in general talking about producing uh, both energy efficiency and renewable sources. We need a kind of comprehensive plan because simultaneously while we're blocking the production of energy, of electricity through all of these solar projects, we're having gas companies say, look, we need to have more gas coming in for other reasons. Um, it's, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but I really support the idea that we really need the, public util the Department of Public Utilities to look at this as a comprehensive plan. And it just seems kind of bizarre that as we're not allowing because of legislation that the utility companies, the electricity companies do not have to buy the solar. While simultaneously that is happening, we have the pipeline demand. And so I really support number four in here and I support the resolution in general. Other comments? Uh, Council O'Donnell? Um, I would just like to say that, well, as we all know, last year we passed a resolution specifically against the expansion of the Tennessee gas pipeline itself. And at the time, we did not contemplate it to be anywhere within our, our borders as a city. Um, but we took that position because um, it's a very important regional issue to us, uh, environmentally, and also, as Councilor Spector, I think, has said well, um, it represents 
a vision of energy policy for our, our state that is just wrong and ultimately will lead to um, less stability and, and and maybe even greater price increases over time. And it's just not what we believe in. So we took that stand. Since then, um, a moratorium has come down in the city, just as moratoria have come down in other communities across the region. I guess there's probably not many communities in Western Mass right now that don't have a moratorium in place for new gas installations. And suddenly we find ourselves very much affected by it. And, you know, this. Uh, frankly, I mean, it makes me a little angry because we have a case where there's a big company that's coming in and uh, really causing a lot of economic pain um, to the people it's supposed to be serving. Not only do we have two affordable housing developments on Pleasant Street that are on, on hold, there are other commercial projects that are on hold, residential projects on hold. If, for example, you didn't pay your bill and you had your gas shut off, right before the moratorium took place, you can't get it back, uh, get, get it back on now. And so people who are in that situation are struggling, and, and there are people who are struggling already um, financially. So within that context, I think what this resolution is saying is pretty humble. It's saying that at a minimum, what the people of this region should have, what the people of the city should have, is some transparency and fairness about the region, uh, reasons why these moratoria have been imposed. And right now, we have neither of those. Councilor Adams and Councilor LaBarge. There is this myth that when we do resolutions that um, <clears throat> we're abandoning, abandoning city business and doing things that, that, are, that we don't have jurisdiction over. And um, again, that's a myth mm -hmm. because we're in the middle of the budget season and it, it, we've been through budget hearings and the entire budget process and and I, I know I know for myself and I'm sure for other counselors we spent a long time scrutinizing the budget budget and, and asking questions and to me the fact that we're looking at this issue too which is a broader issue just shows how much the council does and um, again it's a myth that we uh, abandon city business to do this sort of thing thank you council LaBarge yes um, I'm very pleased as a city councilor that um, this resolution has been put in place. I have to agree with what I heard from Marty Nathan. I think it's scaring people and that's what they want to do. I think it's extremely bad for the environment. I don't agree the expansion of it coming our way. So I'm going to support this. And I want to thank um, the counselors, I think, how many of them? Four that supported this, so. Particular Council O'Donnell, um, in, in my opinion, putting a tremendous amount of work on this. Thank you. Um, I would add to that that part of the challenge that actually comes with this is that, uh, uh, Councilor Spector alluded to it, this comes in a larger context. We all experience uh, an electrical increase uh, rate increase about 33 and a half percent regionally which had a profound impact now the, the the natural gas companies are asserting that essentially part of the demand increase comes from our pullback from reliance on coal and I'll I'll subscribe to that I think that's that's possibly a legitimate influence the fact is is though we don't have access when we, and no public advocacy group has access to the information. We basically have to take it on faith from a PR department who will tell us what's best for us in this circumstance. There are too many coincidences. It does manifest, I think these are legitimate questions given the circumstances and the timing of, in each case. The, the gas spike hitting the caps for uh, solar projects and net metering, meaning the fact that we are essentially now literally handcuffed from expanding our uh, ability to develop locally alternative systems that would reduce our reliance on natural gas and reduce our reliance on, on fossil fuels, which is a commitment this community's made to rely on renewables that have a lower impact and greater benefit. The fact is we are now literally, we don't have the means to, we, it will not make sense to build a solar array on the landfill simply because 
the national grid is not obliged to accept it, any any gener energy that's generated from that project. All this sort of either meshes coincidentally, regardless of whether it's coincidence or whether it's if it's if it actually is by design. I don't really always buy into this massive uh, 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 sense of conspiracy, but the fact is that we. I have no way of knowing, as I said, beyond someone who drafts brochures, what the real thing is. And the fact is we deserve, and this resolution calls for, transparency and clarity in the process, particularly in, given the fact that the bar, we're talking about the eminent domain seizure of property. That's a huge bar to hop over. And traditionally, we created the railroads that way. We seize property without so much as a buy or leave. Well, those era, that era has passed. And the lands, a lot of the lands that this will cross, as uh, uh, Francis Crowe pointed out, the, many of them are in conservation and conservation protection. Designed the whole purpose. People donated their property with the express intent and hope that that property into perpetuity would be protected from invasions very similar to this. And they may find that that's not the case because if the government is prepared to make the, if they're prepared to cede to the uh, to the gas industry in this case, they will indeed authorize a seizure of that land and their rights to use it and their rights to have it be the way they wanted it to be in perpetuity. That we are asking, as Councilor O'Donnell pointed out the most humblest request show us the proof of what you assert that's not a big demand it is we required of government we required of most of these transactions and it's only it seems that this is the minimum we could ask for and it, and we have no reasonable expectation that we will succeed in this so i and the resolution in itself speaks to the will of the community that's been expressed to us but it also speaks to the will of this this council, depending on the vote, of course, but I get the sense that there is at least a good opportunity, a good chance that this will pass. But we, the purposes of a resolution is to speak about the council's resolve and address those issues. Council Barch, and they, uh, actually, Council Klein hasn't spoken yet. He's one of the sponsors, so. Well, another issue that I think we have to contend with, and I'm planning on introducing um, an amendment to this resolution for our second reading. And I'm just learning about this, so bear with me. My understanding is, is that we have a really serious issue with um, really pervasive and systemic um, leaks in the natural gas delivery system. And there are two really serious ramifications related to that. And one is that the state's greenhouse gas inventory is, um, is over 50% of it is created by these gas leaks. And two, um, the cost of these leaks is being passed on to the consumer. Um, so there is also, uh, in addition to, to what's happening around um, the, the mandatory shutoff, is um, uh, a movement at the State House to uh, pass legislation that, in fact, doesn't allow these costs to be passed on to consumers. Um, so I would like to introduce something. I'm not, I'm not prepared to do it yet today, but I am going to introduce something to add to this. Um, for next session. Uh, that's an excellent point. The, the, the fact that actually at, um, Senator Markey is actually uh, right. commissioned studies that reveal that um, if the leaks were addressed, it would, one, address the capacity issue that's alleged, exactly. and two, diminish the introduction of methane or other gases that contribute to um, uh, the greenhouse effect. Councilor LeBarge. Thank you, Alyssa, um, Councillor Klein, because Francis Crow had spoke about the leaks and so forth, and that's a biggie. I do know, because I think I had heard Councillor Specter state that there probably would not be any solar in the landfill. Well, I've been working with Chris Mason, and we're hoping that at the State House that there'll be some changes so that we can look at it and move in that landfill and do that. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but he said they're working very closely with them. 
Councilor O'Donnell and Councilor Spector, you might want to speak to that. I, I, I know that you spoke I, with I, Peter Coca. Someone mentioned earlier that they, they were a person of faith. Um, I hope to, but uh, in my discussions with uh, our representative, it's going to be a long shot in a long time. So, I, I, but I, I hope it. it gets I have passed. one question because I thought I heard a statement to the effect on the moratorium here that if you had not paid your bill, that they would not turn it back on. Isn't there a law that? How can you just shut somebody off if they're disabled or anything? Isn't there? But there's a law? a law that pertains to the winter. You can't shut off a person's source of heat during the winter months. We we actually finally got out of winter, as someone noted, just a matter of weeks ago. But so the but um, they can shut off the gas for non-payment after once it's become more seasonal. And what Councilor O'Donnell was saying was that because of the moratorium. It's considered. I'm presuming they're arguing that it's a new service, and then as such, they won't. There's a moratorium on introducing that new service. But I don't know that. I, but I hadn't heard that. But either. It's awful. Councilor Um I think all the salient points have been made, so I don't want to carry on and on. But I, I would like to underscore what Councilor Klein said because I think it illustrates a larger point. Um, and I think we both got the same information, but relative to the amount of, of money that gas leaks cause us, um, the Conservation Law Foundation found that $38.8 million is passed down to Massachusetts ratepayers every year. And contrast that against you know, the total cost of the expansion of the Tennessee gas pipeline, which is around $5 billion. Another question is how much Will the construction costs and permitting and other things be passed down to ratepayers? I don't know the answer to that. But if our resolution is humble, which I think it is, this proposal from this, this corporation and series of corporations is just utterly shameless. I mean, they're, they're night and day. And what really should be explored um, is, um, is, is a matter that's not really, it's not a culture. Sometimes it's boiled down to being a cultural issue or portrayed as a cultural issue or something that only people who care about the environment um, are concerned with. But it's an economic issue. It's a consumer issue. And one of the other things that this resolution says, that I don't think has been mentioned yet, is show us what the alternatives are, the reasonable, sane alternatives to building a $5 billion dollar pipeline, including upgrading the infrastructure that already exists and that Northampton and East Hampton um, and other communities uh, rely on. And that includes fixing leaks. Um, and frankly, that could be a much easier project, I would imagine, to undertake. Um, so that's the other thrust of this resolution is let's get our facts straight about what this is actually costing people, um, because that matters. Um, is it the Council's pleasure to have this referred to committee? Or um, for further amendment, because there was some, there was some discussion of a substantial yeah. amendment. No, no. I, I would actually like to offer an amendment, which is um, to the point that was made in public comment, which is to uh, one of the resolutions is to forward this to um, Senators Warren and Markey and the Attorney General and uh, uh, our reps are. Uh, and, and in fact, actually, I think um, given the fact that Representative Kulik has been very involved in this, I think it would help be helpful to send it to him as well. So Rep. Colcott and then Senate President San Rosenberg. So I, are you making that? I'm making that. I, I would proposal. second that. Amendment. I'll second that. Yep. Do, do, do you want to make it slightly more specific for the yeah. just, 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 sure. just to enumerate so, any, yes. anybody we <laughs> choose to send it to my little my little mailing list? Maybe other. Um, <laughs> let's see. I have to do in order of descendancy of uh, uh, Senators Markey and Warren, um, Governor Baker, Attorney General, more Healy. Yep. No. No. I'm just. So Attorney General Maura Healy, uh, Senate President Stan Rosenberg, uh, Representatives Kokot and Kulik. Is that it? Senator Senator McGovern. McGovern. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, and Congressman Jim McGovern. Sorry. So that's the, that's the amendment. Is there a second on that? I second it. Okay. 
Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So, um, you want to move, move to the vote? question? Move, move the question. Oh. All right. Uh, interest in roll call for resolution? Okay. Yeah, that was a yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. C Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Donnelly. Yes. Councilor Sierra. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. That passes as amended. First reading of the next one will be our next council meeting, and I expect we're going to hear about an amendment. Councilor Klein, but. Uh, um, I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes of May 21st, 2015. So moved to approve. <laughs> Any discussion on the minutes? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, we have appointments to uh, to committees to refer to the Committee on Rules, Orders, and Appointments and Ordinances. Uh, Chris oh, Palamas. 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 Chris Palamas, 659 Park Hill Road in Florence, will be a new appointment replacing the unexpired term of Susan McCreary. Uh, and this is into for the Disability Committee. This is a term starting June 2015, expiring November 2016. And then also to the Human Rights Commission, uh, Carla Velez, 80 Barrett Street. This is a new appointment replacing the expired term of Sarah Weinberger. Uh, the term is from June 2015, expiring June 2018. Is there a motion to move vote for a Move to refer. Question, uh, please. And, and motion's made and second. Yes. Um, I think the mayor is bringing in an appointment in um, ordinance and rules and appointments for the month of June, correct? Well, I think we're just talking about the police. Well, the mayor indicated he was going to ask for a special meeting give us an appointment for a police chief that would fall for referral at our next meeting this month. When is that? 18th? Our next meeting the 18th? The 15th. Yeah. The 15th. Okay. So will these appointments also be coming in on that? Um, I don't... The fifth, our meeting's the 15th, the council meeting's the 18th, correct? So... It would appear there's enough time for us to do them on the 18th. Right, right, the police chief is not coming until the 18th, is that right? Yes. So we would so have, we to have to have perhaps have a meeting like on the 29th or something to so deal with So these that. will be addressed in their regularly scheduled meeting. There will be a special meeting after that for the police chief. Okay, so this will go, here. this is going to go on June 15th? Yes. Ordinance 15th. That's what I just asked. The council meeting is the 8th. Great. All right. Uh, all those in favor of referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That's referred to it. So we now go into recess for the Finance Committee, uh, where we're going to make Council Murphy read the Dickens out of stuff. We spent a lot of money <laughs> in the next <laughs> 10 minutes or so. Yes, yeah. So, Pam, would you read the. Roll for finance. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Lebarge. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Sierra. Here. All right. The mayor's queuing up, so we may have questions for the mayor. So, the the first thing is uh, to rescind borrowing for Plasky Park. As it happens, we wound up with two borrowing orders. One from. June 5th of 2014 and one that we just did for the phase one so we want to rescind the older one and go with the newer one so upon the recommendation of the mayor order that one million five hundred thousand dollars of borrowing authority authorized under the loan order approved June 5th 2014 for the purposes of improvements of public parks and playgrounds at Pulaski Park be rescinded do we have a motion so moved second, second. and the mayor is here to speak about it yeah, I mean, the only other thing I would add to what you said, Councillor, was just it, when we 
asked for that other authorization, it was in the context of applying for a four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar park grant, mm -hmm. um, which we got. Um, and it's routine that we ask you to mm -hmm. do an authorization for the full cost of the project, and then we come back to you and ask you to delete the authorization. And in this case, it's even more important because we already have a new authorization out there. So this is just housekeeping that we typically do with both park and land grants. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the mayor on this one? No. All in favor of a positive recommendation from finance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Okay. And the next one uh, are year-end budgetary transfers. Uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the following FY 2015 budgetary transfers are hereby made. And the total is $23,032. That money would be coming from Contributory Retirement Actuarial Services, $13,898, and Interest on Municipal Debt, $9,134. And here's where that money would be going. A whopping $1 goes to City Council Permanent Salaries. I don't know who gets it, but it goes to Permanent Salaries. <laughs> Human Resources, uh, Permanent Salaries, $5,100. City Clerk, Permanent Salaries, $2,158. <laughs> Planning and sustain Sustainability Permanent Salaries, $1,110. Veteran Services Permanent Salaries, $1,218. General Liability Insurance, $1,845. General Liability Insurance Property Insurance, uh, $11,600. So I told you where it was coming from, and it's going to those different accounts. Do we have a motion to finance? Move to Second. Second. All right. Questions for the mayor on this one? Again, this is just tidying up the books for the end of the fiscal year. And, um, and just as a point of information, your um, the city council budget for PS is actually off by 28 cents, um, but, we're, but we're only allowed to appropriate whole dollars. So that's why we're giving we're giving you an actual dollar. So we can have a party. Well, and, the, and then the, and then the, <laughs> and the balance will actually we'll have a party with the change. We're not allowed to appropriate less than a dollar. Uh, less than a dollar. So that's why. So it's actually, yeah, twenty eight cents. Twenty eight cents. Uh, that's pretty so, good. So and then the rest of these again are just trying to uh, true up some of our PS line items uh, to get to the end of the year. So okay, any further questions for the mayor? Hearing none. All in favor of a positive aye. recommendation of finance? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right, the next one, upon the uh, recommendation of the mayor, order that $200,000 be appropriated from the FY15 general fund undesignated fund balance, which is free cash, to the fiscal stability or stabilization fund. All right, uh, do we have a motion to finance on this one? Second. Second, okay, uh, the mayor can comment. Again, this is um, as we laid out in our fiscal stability plan in our chart that we have yeah we um we had proposed we're putting funding in our 16 budget into this but we are also proposing to move some of our 15 free cash in as well to build up that fund just a different way of of putting general fund money in but we felt because we're going to close with a, a significant balance this was an easier way to put the funds right in now um, mm -hmm. to build up that fund to where we want to have it so, okay yep. so money for a rainy day and typically we'll be we will um typically come to you at the end of the year because as you know once june 30th tolls the free cash goes away um until it's then recertified Certified. at the end of the year and so that's typically the time that we begin moving it into other um other account stabilization accounts um, and we will be coming to you at your next meeting uh with an order for snow and ice to chew up that budget mm -hmm. um, so we will be doing that and as just well. a reminder for everybody to take it out requires a vote from the council yes indeed so we put it there and it but when we take it out the spend yes. it. all right any more questions for the mayor on this one all in favor of a positive recommendation say aye aye aye, aye. any opposed great thank you okay on the recommendation of the mayor order that $82,283,697, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2016 general fund budget, which runs July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016, be appropriated for the purposes stated, provided that the appropriation. Yeah, so I, think we, uh, I, skip skip one I think he did. Did we skip one? Um, 
I think you may. Just before senior you get into that, senior if there's a, um, gift, there's a gift, gift fund for oh, senior gift services. Fun, yeah, the van. Okay, sorry. I'm all excited about eighty-two million dollars. <laughs> yeah, you just want. Yeah. Um, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor. The Northampton City Council gratefully accepts donations totaling sixty-five thousand dollars to the Northampton Senior Services in accordance with Mass. General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A, and approves using the gifted funds to purchase and equip a van for the <coughs> Senior Center to be used in the Senior Center Trans Transportation Services Program. Um, a motion to finance? So I'm make a motion. Okay. All right. Any questions for the mayor? I was just going to add, um, you'll note in the, we're actually, the goal is to buy two of these vans this year. And so the seniors have been raising funds through their Kick the Tires campaign. So this is basically to accept the proceeds of their Kick the Tires campaign. And then when hopefully when you adopt this other 65000 our hope is to buy two at the same time. Because yeah, there's one in the capital plan. Exactly. And this is the fundraising for the second one. Exactly. So this sets up a gift fund for, for the city to accept it. And our hope is to buy two at the same time. And, and the, these are chair vans. So they are wheelchair vans, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Okay, now we go to 82 million. On the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of 82, 82 million, 283,697 dollars, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal 2016 general fund budget, which runs July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016 be appropriated for the purposes stated, provided that appropriation for the Smith Vocational Agricultural High School shall be used solely for the purposes of meeting net school spending as defined, defined by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and no funds so appropriated should be transferred to any account or expended for any purposes that would not be included in the calculation of net school spending. To meet this appropriation, $1,757,050 will be raised and appropriated from parking meter receipts, uh, receipt reserves, $10,000 from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund, $5,000 from the Cemetery Sale of Lot Receipts Reserve, $1,101,489 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $618,917 from the Water Enterprise Fund, $76,227 from the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund, $266,999 from the Stormwater Enterprise Fund, $5,000 from Wetland Filing Fees, $1,500 from the Water Waste Fund, $12,376 from the Community Preservation Act Administrative Funds, $147,852 from Comcast INET Reserve Fund, $100,000 from energy rebates, $30,424 from reserves for police station debt service, and $78,147,763 will be raised and appropriated. Do we have a motion to find? Make a motion. Second. Second? All right. Any questions for the mayor on this? Yeah. Well, uh, Your Honor, um, I think you should. I would like to recognize the mayor. Maybe he could talk about this. Well, he's, the mayor's, mayor's always recognized. We, we recognize him all the time. So you want me to do this? I, I just, I, 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 yeah. I have a question relative to something that came up in public comment uh, mm -hmm. by Emory Ford. And I don't know if you got yeah. an opportunity to hear it, but uh, Actually, I, was, I, yeah, I figure you did. So yeah. it, uh, it's, he's talking about it. <clears throat> well, first of all, he asked that we reject the budget on the premise that, that there is no presented five-year plan for long-term plan for the stormwater fee I, I doubt that's going to be uh, the likely outcome but uh, well, I, you did wanna, I did want to point out that um, the capital improvement program that you approved mm -hmm. is a five-year uh, capital plan and, and there is a section on it of stormwater uh, expenditures and in fact one of the one of the borrowings that I discussed tonight as part of the uh, bond sale that we experienced was part of a you know, levy uh, project. And if you look in your budget tonight, um, there are a series of capital projects for um, stormwater that are specifically uh, designated from stormwater funds. So, um, so there is a five-year capital plan, but there's part of the five-year capital program. Um, in terms of what was said about the um, 
about the budget, uh, we, I mean, that was I mean, part of the issue with stormwater was we were, um, we were actually consciously moving it out <coughs> of uh, the general fund and moving it into its own division. Um, and we do have positions now that are solely dedicated and paid for um, out of stormwater because that's what they're working on. Um, so, you know, in terms of, uh, I know that uh, Mr. Ford referenced meeting with me. I wish he had met with me just one more time because uh, I could have cleared this up for him. Uh, we do have a we do have a plan, and I know that it's the DPW's intention when they close out the books on. Actually, this is the second fiscal year. Right. Um, he kept referring that this was the first year, but actually the one we're in right now was the first year of having the stormwater fund. So I know that our plan, in accordance with the ordinance, is to come to you and give you a full report on what <coughs> has happened during year one of the program. But I think the, the thought was to, f to finish out the rest of the full fiscal year so we could give you a full year report. And, and the items listed in this budget conform to that five-year plan that is as laid out in your in for the for year one exactly yes. yeah and, and, and we're funding the projects uh, that are essentially the year one of the capital improvement program are are reflected in this uh, in the capital budget at the back of this budget. Thank you for that clarification. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor, if you could just clarify for me because I don't I don't recall. So the the capital improvement plan has. Um, it's there's it's a five-year plan the program and, and yeah. the program's five years and it includes some stormwater capital expenditures but does it include a specific five-year um, does it include a five-year plan for stormwater capital expenditures it, it includes projects that they anticipate doing over the next five years um, in all of their divisions yeah. um, and, you know including general highway and you know, all their budgets um, and that's what we base that on um, so that's so again we restart the process again obviously the next four years those may change they may be reevaluated but we have fully integrated stormwater into our overall capital improvement program system that's part of the charter and you're required to get it and hold a hearing on it and endorse it and um, and I'm required to keep updating it and submitting it to you every year it, um, that actually did come up when we uh, did the department head budget hearings, and uh, Ned had laid out, uh, Ned Huntley, the director of uh, Harvard Public Works, laid out the projects that they have, particularly the big budget ones, the ones mandated and the ones that are definitely require our attention. He laid them out, and as you said, that's all contingent on. Um, fortunes as they evolve but at this point that's the long-term plan mm -hmm. projected out over how they're going to continue to address particularly the sewage treatment plant and stormwater capacity and and, yep. maintenance. and they are doing ongoing maintenance on the levees and dikes as required by this federal the federal government and all that's built into the budget and, and also I mean there's also there is stuff in just the general operating budget for just all of the normal, uh, you know, equipment and, and uh, vehicles and other things related to it. Um, and, and you're right, actually, during the course of the debate and the original appeal, and what part of the original intent of the appeal was the fact that to move this obligation out of the general fund, because of the pressures that it created in the general fund, it was, it, it, it seemed that the only solution that we, as we struggle with this for a number of years, was to create a dedicated fund for this and not continue to burden the general fund, which was straining under so many other pressures that we, and that we could in, as such with the establishment of this program, I'll allow ourselves the ability to plan out over multiple years as opposed to reacting year to year. And that was, as I recall, that was the original intent of setting up this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thanks for the clarification again. Are there questions for the mayor on it? Thank you, Mayor. Hearing none, then in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right. Next, we have the the four enterprise funds on recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of six million seventy four thousand sixty seven dollars, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen sewer enterprise fund budget, again July one fifteen to June thirty sixteen. Be appropriated for the purposes stated 
and to meet the appropriation, $6,074,067 is raised from sewer receipts. Do we have a motion on this one in finance? Second. Second. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, the next one would be water enterprise. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of six million six hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and eighty eight dollars, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen water enterprise fund budget, be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet the appropriation six million six hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and eighty eight dollars is to be raised from water receipts. Do we have a motion on this? Make a motion. Second. 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 Any questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Great. Uh, next is solid waste. Order that the sum of $517,593, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 2016 solid waste enterprise fund budget be appropriated for purposes stated and to meet said appropriation of $419,000 $419, is to be raised from solid waste receipts and that $98,593 is to be made available from the undesignated fund balance of the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. Do we have a motion on this one in finance? So Make a motion. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor in finance, aye. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And finally, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $1,974,676, which is the full amount necessary for fiscal year 2016 stormwater enterprise fund budget be appropriated for the purposes stated and to meet said appropriations one million nine hundred and seventy four thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars is to be raised from stormwater receipts do we have a motion on this one so much. Motion. second all right any questions for the mayor on stormwater hearing none all in favor of a positive recommendation please say aye aye, aye. any opposed Right now, uh, we're going to the revolving funds. And these are all being done together tonight. And again, these are funds where uh, departments and entities get either fees or contributions and subsequently spend, spend them. So uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the city council authorizes the following revolving funds in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, for the fiscal year 2016. Receipts received but not expended in fiscal year 2016 shall be carried over to fiscal year 2017 if these funds are reauthorized for fiscal year 2017 by the council. No further appropriation shall be made in excess of the balance of the funds, nor shall total expenditures for <coughs> fiscal year exceed the annual spending limit as noted. And I'll read off the funds in the totals. Energy and Sustainability Revolving Fund, $150,000. The Hazmat Revolving Fund, $85,000. Public Works Construction Services Revolving Fund, $85,000. DPW Cross Connection Program Revolving Fund, $75,000. Senior Services Transportation Fund, $75,000. Senior Services Activities Revolving Fund, $90,000. Senior Services Gift Shop, Revolving Fund, $20,000. Senior Services Food Service Revolving Fund, $50,000. Senior Services Publications Revolving Fund, $50,000. Senior Trips and Travel Revolving Fund, $100,000. Athletic League Fees Revolving Fund, $230,000. JFK Family Aquatic Center Revolving Fund, $120,000. Northampton Public Schools Transportation Revolving Fund, $225,000. Smith Vocational Farm Revolving Fund, $100,000. Tourism Directional Sign Program Revolving Fund, $20,000. Public Health Nursing Program Revolving Fund, $20,000. James House Revolving Fund, $75,000. Sharps Disposal Program Revolving Fund, $15,000. Fire Alarm Monitoring Program Revolving Fund, $60,000. And the DPW Re Reuse Committee Revolving Fund, $15,000. Do we have a motion in finance? Second? Second. Second. Right. Any questions on these revolving funds? Uh, Councilor. My, my question is just um, there's multiple senior center revolving funds, and I'm just wondering the rationale behind their separation. Are they 
required to be separate for any particular reason, or it's just that's how they've evolved? I'm sorry. Oh, just, my question, I'm just wondering, there's multiple senior center revolving funds? I think it's because they have so many different distinct activities that we, um, that like, and they are sort of treated as separate cost centers. Okay. So there's the, you know, the cafe and the dress, the doll shop and the trips and travels. And so they've sort of evolved over time. And I think it's just, it's a way, because all of these are fee driven, um, it's just an, it's an easier way for them to be able to segregate and keep track of all of those. Okay. That um, just stood out to me. So yeah, that makes sense. Know, Thank you. Any? No, it is it's exactly what you said. Cost yeah. centers, we like to keep them separate because yeah. they're self-funding. And they've been added okay. individually over time as they branch out into other activities, yeah. correct? So they don't all start yeah. at once. Right. When they do something new, they say, hey, we want to raise funds for this. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions on finance on this one? Then all in favor, in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to capital projects. Um, in City Council, upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the following capital projects be appropriated from the FY15 General Fund Undesignated Fund Balance, or free cash. Central Services Fire Department Alerting System Update, $15,000. Central Services Municipal Building Exterior and Interior Painting, $83,000. Planning and Sustainability Tax Title Priority City Acquisitions, $40,000. Senior Services this is the chairlift fan, $65,000. Information technology, replacement of equipment, $50,000. Information technology, replace servers at the police department, $75,000. Fire and rescue department, replace self-contained breathing apparatus, <coughs> $5,000. Fire rescue, replace shift command vehicle, $57,950. Northampton Public Schools, energy management system upgrade, $50,000. Northampton Public School, Leeds and Ryan Road School Roof Replacement, $119,866. Northampton Public Schools, Wheelchair Bus, $60,000. Northampton Public Schools, Wireless Project, Bridge Street, Jackson and Ryan Road, $129,184. Northampton Public School, Jackson Street, Front Entrance and Stair Repair, $40,000. And at the DPW, DPW sidewalk repair and construction, $50,000. DPW traffic calming, $25,000. <coughs> DPW and Northampton Public Schools, JFK School crossing lights on Bridge Road, $75,000. For a total of uh, $1,040,000. Do we have a motion to finance? A motion. Second? Second. All right. Any questions for the mayor? We've talked about a couple of these already. Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation, okay. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, on the recommendation of mayor, order that the following capital projects be appropriated from receipts reserved for appropriation parking division. Painting in the parking garage, $90,000. Parking maintenance truck, $40,000. Garage structural repairs, phase three, $200,000. For a total of $330,000. Make a motion. Second. Any questions on this? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. On the recommendation of the mayor, order that $66,075 be appropriated from receipts, receipts reserved for appropriation, sale of land account to the following capital projects. Leeds and Ryan Road roofs, $16,075. DPW equipment storage building, $50,000. Have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. All right. Questions for the mayor on this one? All in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that $15,685.03 remaining from the FY 2011 capital project for the Northampton Public Schools five-year technology plan and $9,314.87 remaining from the FY14 capital projects for the Northern High School parking lot repairs be used for the acquisition of a clear pass, clear pass wireless unit for the Northampton Public Schools. Do we have a positive recommendation on this one? Second? Second. Any questions on this one? All in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Upon the recommendation of the mayor, ordered that $35,000 be appropriated from receipts reserved for appropriation 
dog fund to be used for setup costs associated with bringing the animal control services in-house to include the purchase of a vehicle and associated equipment. We have a motion in finance? Second. 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 Any question on the dog fund? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And this one uh, is going to need to be amended. And uh, I'll read it for you, and then I'll we'll put in the amendment. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $32,500 is appropriated, and we need the word from inserted as an amendment. So the sum of $32,500 is appropriated from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund to be used towards equipment <coughs> purchase for the DPW, such equipment to be used in the maintenance of the city's cemeteries. Do I have a motion on an amendment? Second. No, you, somebody needs to make the sheet. Oh, I just she did. did. Oh, you did? Okay. You second of the amendment. Any questions on the amendment? All in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, then to the uh, order as amended with the from. Uh, a recommendation as amended? A motion as amended? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Okay. Um, and this one, we're going to need two readings on in the um, in the council meeting because this one is to um, make some repairs in the Dectron unit at the pool at the Kennedy School, and they want to be able to go ahead with it because there's a very narrow window between when the summer camps end and the school starts using it again. So they want to be able to go ahead and sign the contract so they can get it done in that couple of weeks between those two programs. So upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $627,561 is appropriated from the capital stabilization fund for the following projects, Northampton Public School, Leeds and Ryan Road roofs, $187,561. Northampton Public Schools, JFK School Dectron Unit for Pool, $200,000. And uh, DPW Equipment Replacement, $240,000 for a total of $627,561. We have a motion? A motion. Second. Second. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, then a positive recommendation in finance. I'll say aye, please. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, thank you. And the last one, upon the recommendation of the mayor, be it ordered that the city council hereby accepts the provision of Mass General Law Chapter 61, Section 71F, which allows monies received by the school committee as tuition payments for non-residents to be held in separate accounts to be expended by the school committee without further appropriation for expenses incurred in providing education for such non-resident <coughs> students. <coughs> and just for a little background on this, um, these accounts were being treated this way anyway, but I guess it was discovered that, that, it, was ne that it, was, it was never approved by council. So essentially, this is, not, this is not something we haven't been doing. It was just discovered that it, we'd never run it through council. It was carried under a different chapter, which had to be renewed every year, and this is one that does it. So any questions on this one for the mayor? No. Uh, then uh, uh, we didn't get a motion. Did a motion in finance to approve? So moved. Second? Second. And no questions? Uh, yes, council. Well, I, um, just, just so I understand, it, it creates just one extra ac uh, account uh, or segregated account or it's just yeah, a variety under mass general law there's this there's these 71 and a half funds which are specifically for out of district tuition um, and our new business we don't actually in the NPS side we don't get a ton yeah. no. of, of tuition but um, our new business manager uh, Candy Walzak who just uh, came in this year is sort of trying to go through the entire school budget um, and she realized that the these few amounts of funds were actually being treated under a different section of state <coughs> law um, and we hadn't actually accepted this it's a local act um, and it's what our auditor recommends for these particular types of uh, tuition so okay. so if we looked at past budgets we'd see the same funds there um, yeah but mostly. again not not very um, not very significant amounts okay. um, mm -hmm. it's just a way of treating the funds and previously it was under chapter 50 something and now it's under chapter 70, 70 something what we talked about you just voted yeah. and and there is one of these at Smith folk which is very active <laughs> because of all where the all the kids come from and there's one at Northampton Public School that doesn't run near run through nearly 
anywhere near as much money as Smith Folk there does. There isn't one at NPS yet. Yeah, but, this will. But the, we discovered this when they said we want one. Okay, so. but their use of it would be considerably less than Smith Folk's. Very little money. Yeah, okay, Councilor, you had a question. Uh, actually, that answered my question because it's, it's simply <laughs> what we're being asked here is to accept um, the provisions of the law. Uh, and, and apply it for MPS so that MPS has the ability to to accept tuitions legally under Mass General Law. Mm -hmm. Okay. So both accounts, the Smith Folk one and then NPS one, would be approved under Chapter 71 the way it's supposed to be. It, could you give an example of a tuition that might actually arise? I mean, I. If someone, if a if a student comes from out of district for special education. Right. Um, Got it. Okay. A, there might right. be a local. Tuition fee involved. So that Mass general law requires that the student be sent to a, sending, uh, to a school that can accommodate their needs if, they're, yeah. if their district isn't capable of providing it. And if we are capable of providing it, then we receive tuition in that respect. And, and just like we pay tuition if we have to send someone out of right. district. So we, do, we, we yeah. send to another district. So that's the most common type of tuition, unlike Smith Vogue, which charges tuition to anyone who's a non Northampton right. resident. Mm -hmm. Councilor Scare. So, so this isn't for for kids that choice into Northampton? It's not school choice. No, that's a totally different, uh, school choice comes through on our cherry sheets. So that's a totally different, uh, that's handled at the state level. Um, this is actually for a student that came here for some specific purpose other than school choice. Um, and, that, and so there's a tuition fee involved. So that's why it's higher on the Smith Bogue side because they're coming for the specific purpose of going to the vocational school. Uh, well, Smith Vogue, um, uh, you know, 78% of the students are tuitioned from sending communities. So that's why their tuition is $4 million, $6.5 6 million dollars every year. Um, so it's much larger, yeah. Um, and obviously, how many, what's, do you know roughly what the number would be for NPS? They, at the moment, they've only identified one. They've only yeah. identified one student yeah. um, that they would be taking in. It was just as Councillor Dwight said, a SPED student that um, a program here has been identified as something that they could come to. The, um, the other revolving fund has been existing. It's been in the accountant's books as a Chapter 7171F, but this council never actually voted it. It voted it as a 53E and a half, and then it just kind of it predated the mayor and I and then as I was researching this for Northampton um, I realized they hadn't really hadn't adopted the correct statute so we've been doing it we've been running it the way we've been running it correctly we just haven't been running it with this actual vote so this vote will make the Smith Voke one perfectly uh, correct and it'll allow Northampton Public Schools to have one and they're gonna have very little money running through that because most of the students are, are are coming through school choice or, or whatever. Councilor Barch, did that answer your no, question? I'm, I'm all set here, so. Okay. So for our last financial order, uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, is there any business we did not reasonably expect would come up? Hearing none, then a motion to adjourn finance. Oh. Maybe we didn't. Well, we can do it again if we didn't. Um, I thought we did, though. The minutes of May 7th, 2015. Do we have a motion to approve? Oh, we did. Move to I thought we did. No, the council. We yeah, did the regular. Minutes. These are finance yes. minutes. Sorry. Well, let's do it again if we didn't do it. <laughs> Move to approve. Second? We did the regular minutes. Yeah, we did the right. This is finance. Um, was that a second in finance? Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Thank you. We come out of recess. And go back to uh, actually I, I'm grateful for uh, Council Murphy speed reading skills reading reading those orders and if, if you could have them and, and if you like I can reread them all for you as we go oh, we just heard them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually can you, you there you have souvenir reading um, but as we go so now We didn't move. I thought we, we did. Didn't the appointments. We moved the appointments. Yeah. Yep. They were they were referred. So, uh, first up now. Uh, okay. So people coming um, who are new to the council uh, meetings and the fact that you may not be 
be able to see this tonight anyway if you're watching on TV. But just to let you know, uh, our tradition is, and it's kind of a clunky tradition, admittedly, that we go into finance, finance reads the financial orders, refers them back to us, the general body, and then um, we go over them again for this time, in fact, for a vote based on the recommendations or using or referring to the recommendations in any event. Um, it should also be noted that there's been multiple public hearings relative to the budget and throughout the year we've actually numerous discussions about how the budget proceeds. The budget is the mayor's authority. As I said earlier in the public hearing, the mayor drafts the budget, presents it to the council, and that includes incorporated in that is the budget from the school, uh, which accounts for a significant portion of it. Our job as counselors is to approve, uh, recommend cuts, or disapprove. And as I said, those are our three options as we go forward. We cannot add, and we cannot <coughs> redirect funds. Um, and with that charge, and, and it should be noted, this is actually a significant portion of what it is that we do as counselors. So. Um, uh, and and I, I want to assert that we do not take this lightly, but this will move somewhat expeditiously at this point because this is now more or less the formality of the votes. So, first up, uh, the first order is to rescind the borrowing authority, of course, for $1,500,000 for the <coughs> park improvements that you heard the mayor speak to. There's been a motion. Second. Second. Uh, this is in first reading. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. That passes in first reading. It will be revisited with a second reading at the next meeting. Uh, next up is the FY 2015 budget transfers, and this is a this is also first reading. I'll accept the motion, put them on the floor. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on those? You want me to itemize them again, or is everyone pretty comfortable with that? Do it in German. <laughs> Do it in German. <laughs> Councilor Specter, in case anyone hasn't guessed, is a lame duck. And he's not running for re-election, and he, <laughs> he can he go watched. around. I will, I will leave it on your voicemail in German for you. So. Thank you. Uh, it seems the rest of the council Dunk prefer that I not do it. Um, you can go to tape. You can roll tape when it's available <laughs> to see what these orders were. So this, uh, the motions have made in second, and for the FY 2015 budget transfers, uh, any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Specter. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. That also passes at first reading. Um, we now go from the FY uh, 15 general fund undesignated fund balance to the fiscal stability stabilization fund transfer. For, uh, this was also first reading. Motions are made. Second. Second. Further discussion? No? Just I'll talk down. Just Tell me. To, to praise the, um, the extension of our um, our fiscal stability plan um, into the future generally uh, by the mayor. So, you know, this being one small part of it. I would agree with that. I think and actually the it's it's also this also directly relates to the other item that he talked to about our bond rating and how it translates into considerable savings with a very small um, rate of borrowing. Um, there, these things are interconnected, and it does speak to the bond rating. Also speaks to the outward perception, not only the inward perception of our fiscal stability and our and the stability going forward in our plan. So. I, I, I agree with you. Um, any other discussion on this point? Roll call, please. Councilor LaBarge. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Blake. Yes. Councilor yes. Carney. Yes. 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 That passes in first reading. Next up is the gift fund for the senior service van. This is first reading. Second. 
Motions are made and seconded. Any further discussion on the van? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Spector? Yes. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Clark? Yes. Councillor Yes. Okay. This is the big nut. This is the sum of $82,283,697. Uh, this is the financial orders to support the City of Northampton fiscal year 2016 proposed budget. This is the first reading. Move approval. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Further discussion on this? Councilor Adams. The Mayor. Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, the public comment, or, or maybe during, during the budget hearings, there is a gentleman who was talking about um, extending preschool hours. Do we, have we ever, do we know what the costs of that are, or? Um, I, I was actually confused, because we have, uh, I, I couldn't understand which preschool program he was in. I mean, we do have a very robust oh. preschool program um, that's at Bridge Street School that should be reflected in the budget. He, he, I think he was describing uh, uh, an immersion program for um, uh, preschool for for some spe for sped children, and but we do have that as well. He was talking about the program we have. He's just suggesting we make the day long. Yeah. So instead yeah. of the there's for three year olds and for there are two separate mm -hmm. uh, sections and each one's about two and a half hours. Okay. Away. So he was suggesting maybe a, a full day. Yeah. I guess I don't know, I don't have that information. Um, and I think as the council president correctly stated, that would be a, that would be a school administration um, decision. And I think they would have to, and the school committee would have to approve that type of an expenditure. I was just, so, I was just yeah. wondering what the, if we knew the cost. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that, that's a question I could follow up with the, um, with the superintendent on um, and find out. Yeah. There would be a, sp I'm sorry, there'd be a space issue involved too, because they, you know, the, there's a morning program and an afternoon program, so there'd be many factors involved yeah. in making yeah. and making staff it. and staff. exactly. And uh, I do believe he's planning. He had stayed and he just stepped out, but I believe he's uh, planning and presenting to the to the school, school committee. So yeah, I think that would be the best. Uh, I think Dr. Provost um, uh, would be one of the the better folks to be able to address that, as well as uh, Ms. Farkas, who's the school's the district's uh, special education coordinator. Right. Right. Any other questions, discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor Lombardi. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. That passes in first reading, and I should also note that that, that included the general fund balance, uh, budget, the sewer enterprise fund budget, the water enterprise fund budget, solid waste enterprise fund budget, uh, stormwater enterprise fund budget, and the revolving fund, and my deep, sincere gratitude to Susan Wright for helping us bundle this. I don't know if people recall, I'm sure they recall last year when I read every order <laughs> for every item yes. deep into the night. Um, so thank you again, Susan. We are now at the FY 2016 financial orders to support the capital project plan. And this is the first reading. I'll accept the motion. Second. The motion's made and seconded. Councilor Carney, Councilor Shara. Uh, any further discussion on this? And I will say that this is, uh, the, this includes the uh, general fund undesignated fund balance, as we call also called free cash, uh, the appropriated uh, from the receipts reserved for appropriation, uh, parking, and that's in the capital projects appropriated for receipts reserved for appropriation, the sale of land, uh, funds for acquisition of the clear pass wireless unit at uh, Northampton Public Schools, which you heard Council Murphy talk about, the appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation, the dog fund, uh, and uh, the animal control uh, services in-house uh, and then appropriated from the cemetery perpetual care fund uh, toward equipment purchases for the DBW. Um, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Shira. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. 
Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. That passes in first reading. Uh, where we? Okay. I don't know where it was. In, it was the capital projects for a request for two readings, wasn't it? Um, this is a financial order. Uh, to support the FY uh, 2016 capital project plan for the request for two readings. This is the $627,561 appropriated from the capitalization fund for various projects and the included in those projects were uh, the pool and the middle school. And that there was a request for two readings on that. Motions are made to approve as a second. Second. Further discussion on these items. Roll we'll call first reading, please. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Passes in first reading. Second. Motions are made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading tonight. Any discussion on the motion to suspend rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Move second reading. Second. Motions are made and seconded for second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call for second reading, please. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Those pass in second reading. Uh, Next up is the accepting the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 71, Section 71F. And this is for first reading. So moved. Motions made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Yes. That passes in first reading and will be revisited again in our next meeting. Uh, I should note that, uh, and, uh, and the mayor referred to this, the snow and ice item uh, inadvertently got dropped from the agenda, so was not we were not able to put it in on time. So there will be a request for two readings for approval on that at the next council, just to, in the next council meeting, just to give everyone a heads up on that. Um, now we move to orders and ordinances, and this uh, an ordinance pertaining to the Special Conservancy District, and it's to be referred to the Planning Board uh, and, and, and ordinance. Second. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> I would like to point out, counselors, you have new parking placards. They expire, your blue ones expire um, this month. So you'll convert to orange, which is easier to spot. I've gotten a lot of tickets with my blue one. They, they don't see them so well, but this one this one should stand out a little better. Um, uh, there are no information requests, and there's no new business that we couldn't reasonably anticipate. Updates chairs. I'm sorry? I'm just wondering if there are updates from chairs. Yes, oh, go right ahead. I don't have one. I'm just wondering. No, are there updates from chairs, I'm sorry, from any committees? No? Councilors, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Uh, it's seconded. No debate. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all very much. You're welcome.